Welcome to this presentation on development of UMS MOOC or the UMS Massive Open Online Courses. During this presentation, I will be providing you with guidelines regarding the development of the MOOC courses under the Open Learning Platform. This is an overview of the timetable for MOOC development. So MOOC will involve three training sessions which will cover various aspects of content development as well as evaluation development. And finally, we have some iStudio recordings which are optional but which may be requested by some of the lecturers who intend including some practical content or experimental protocols. The proposed date for the launch of the MOOC will be the 1st of November. So these are some of the guidelines which I will be focusing on. These include the instructions for the usage of open learning, the development of course content, as well as the format for evaluation. Additional training will be provided during the course of the MOOC development. So the first thing which we need to be aware of is that all UMS MOOC courses are ho hosted on the openlearning.com platform. This is the officially endorsed platform by the Ministry of Higher Education and all courses need to be hosted under this platform. This is a screenshot of the Malaysia MOOC platform and your courses can be accessed globally through this platform which is under the openlearning.com website hosting service. The second aspect which we need to take into consideration is the YouTube account. So each one of us who has an official UMS account can link up this account to a YouTube account. All content developed for the MOOC courses, which includes online lectures, has to be uploaded to this YouTube account and link back to the openlearning.com platform. So this is an example of Creator Studio in YouTube. As you can see, these videos have been uploaded onto YouTube and they are approximately 10 minutes duration each. And we can backlink this YouTube videos to the openlearning.com platform. This enables ease of download as well as upload of these videos. The next aspect which I will be focusing on is the courses which I approved for conversion to the MOOCs. So in UMS, we have MQA approved courses. So all MQA approved courses which bear uh, official course code and which are actively being offered under the programs at UMS will be considered for MOOC upgradation. So remember that your course needs to have a course code as well as a course title. Storyboard development is another aspect of MOOC. This needs to be taken into consideration because not all content from a lecture can be uploaded within the short duration of time allocated to a MOOC module. Generally, openlearning.com prefers modules which range from 10 to 15 minutes and each module focuses on a specific topic. In case you require additional videos based on your practical session or experimental sessions, we will we arrange a video team to record your lecture and to edit it for upload to YouTube. Some of the tools which you can use for content development are Screencastify, which is a plugin for Chrome and which will facilitate the recording of your lecture online. In fact, this lecture has been developed using another plugin which is known as Loom, 
We will be discussing these two plugins during the course of your training and they are relatively simple to use and can be embedded with a webcam if you desire to do so. During the process of the content development, we will require each of the lecturers to develop a table of content. So this table of content basically covers the 14 weeks of lectures in which you have your lecture topic, which will focus on one key aspect of your lecture. This will be followed by a course synopsis, which basically discusses this particular lecture topic. Evaluation is another component of MOOCs, and this evaluation is available in the form of plugins. So we have quizzes, ordering quizzes, as well as matching quizzes for the MOOC platform. So we will be training you on the usage of different kinds of evaluation plugins. In addition to these three components, every lecture topic has to be embellished with additional material. This can be in the form of a link to a YouTube video or a PDF file based on the relevance or pertinence of this additional material to the primary lecture topic. The minimum number of lectures is 14. We have taken this into consideration when we developed the MOOC because the idea of a MOOC is to provide the key concepts. So 14 lectures of 10 minutes each in which each lecture will focus on one key concept. This is an example of a MOOC learning platform. As you can see, we have three key topics and each topic will focus on one lecture delivered by the respective lecturer along with the associated content, which will include an evaluation using a quiz as well as additional reading material. So this is the dashboard as it appears in the openlearning.com website. So evaluation is carried out using different formats. For instance, we have the quiz format in which a participant is required to complete a quiz. We have matching, ordering formats, as well as short answer formats. So each of these formats requires the application or use of a specific widget, which is a plug and play concept available at the open learning platform. Additional iStudio required things may be required in case you have any experimental content. For instance, you may want to upload a laboratory practical. In this case, a team from the Center for eLearning will record your specific experiment and upload it into the YouTube account, following which you can embed this link into the openlearning.com platform. Additional iStudio recordings are optional because based on our surveys of lectures delivered online, a greater emphasis is given on the lecture in terms of the audio link as compared to a video link to a specific slide along with the lecturer presenting the slide. Thank you for watching this short introduction to MOOCs. In case you need additional information, please contact me at the following email address. Thank you.